check, check. Check, check. You ready to go? One, one, two, three. Morning, church. Stand with me. Let's sing to the Lord. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Oh, 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 oh. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chains every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow before him who can stop the lord almighty Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Our God is a Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is a Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Oh, 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 oh. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, 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 oh. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb.
We're going to sing, let's stand to the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in your desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard declare. clouds shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice it's the year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation comes there is no god like jehovah there is no god like jehovah God like Jehovah, there is no sing it with me, church. Come on, there is no God like Jehovah, 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 there is no God like Jehovah. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes, behold he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. So lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee. And out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. On Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me, I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed 
my heavy stone Messiah still and all Oh praise the name of the Lord our God Oh praise his name forever person beside you and saying, you're doing a great job. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. God, doing a great job. This is the song she I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will 
refine the name of all names And nothing can stand against I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names And nothing can stand against I choose to praise Glorify, glorify the name of all names and nothing can stand against Yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name Well, I got an announcement. We are going to do a Good Friday service this year. And it begins at 6.30 with a meal out in the youth building that's catered by Potpourri House. And you'll have a good time. I'm telling you, it's good food. Strawberry salad's outstanding. Anyway. Uh, but I would... Request that you sign up for th that meal, and there's a sign-up sheet out here in the South Foyer. If you want to partake of the meal from 6.30 to 7.30, you'll need to sign up and bring $8 with you. That's not much. I spent 20 at McDonald's before. <laughs> so I'll get a much better meal for $8. And then at 7.30 that same afternoon or evening, we will meet in here to have a Good Friday service. We will get to hear testimony from a couple of people. I guarantee you will be uh, really excited about hearing what God has done. And then we're, we'll go on to have a little bit of praise and worship, our praise and worship first, and then we'll have communion together. And that lasts from 7.30 to 8.30. Amen. And we're gonna, just going to say it'll last as long as the Lord wants it to last. Let's put it that way. And so be here if you can. Now, I'm going to be kind of like uh, Abraham here. I'm going to do a reverse psychology here. Lord, let it be 50 that show up. But yet, Lord, let me say, let it be 60 and 70. You know, it's important that we celebrate. No doubt it's important that we celebrate. So please be here if you can. I'm going to ask the ushers to come this morning. We take up this morning's offering, and you know what? I'm blessed. I'm blessed uh, that the Lord has blessed me, and I get to be a blessing. Amen. Now, if the Lord's blessed you, say amen. 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 I know the Lord's blessed you. And so, you know what? I'm going to ask you to look in your heart and just ask the Lord, Lord, what do I give? Lord, how much do I give? You know God can do that. You know, Lord can impress on your heart. And God is good. We can never repay him, folks. I'm not trying to repay him. I could never do it for what he did on Calvary. But one thing I do do, because I love the Lord Jesus Christ, if you love him today, you will do what he commands. And in your heart, my friend, do exactly that. Let me go before the Lord and let's ask this blessing. I'm going to ask the little ones to come on up to as we take up pocket change. I didn't. I almost forgot you there. Come on up here. All right. You know, we, we took up that uh, pocket change. I forgot. Skip had to tell me. $1,685. $1,685. You know where all that goes? It goes into a fund to help people in our church, outside the church, and everywhere else. And I'm going to tell you what, it's a blessing to be able to help people. So let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you and praise you for all that you've done for us. Lord, we pray the day that we would be cheerful givers. Lord, help us here today to show our love and our worship toward you with our giving. 
And so, Lord, thank you. Praise you, Lord, for all that you do. Lord, take this offering today and use it to reach people. And, Lord, I know that you will. I know you're going to do a tremendous work with it. So, Lord Jesus, thank you once again in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to change. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning. I was uh, looking at Sarah over there. Sarah and John's going to be leading our children in Children's Church this morning, so give them a round of applause and let the children go out with them. And they'll be having a good time this morning and a real challenge, right? <laughs> I told you my story. They asked me to teach uh, children's church one time many, many years ago, and it was a real challenge, I want to tell you. And uh, so kids asked the deep theological questions, and so we gave them a real shallow answer. But anyway, they're, they're good. Praise the Lord. Well, as they're going out to children's church... Let me get you to turn your Bibles over to 2 Peter. We'll begin in chapter 3. Don't know if I'll get finished with chapter 3 today. We'll we'll make a showing, though. And um, we titled this message, Biblical Living. I don't know how, how you live, but you're supposed to live biblically. You're supposed to live by the Word of God. You're supposed to be changed. And... Um, don't always do that. <clears throat> I have to admit, sometimes we allow our flesh or a moment to get the best of us, but we're supposed to live for the Lord. And uh, living in the last days, we're, we feel like we're in the last days. We know that according to the Word of God that we're in the last days. And I need to be reminded <clears throat> of that. I need to re- be reminded of what the Lord teaches here. So in chapter 2 of Peter, verse 1 and 2 of chapter 3, and this is what Peter says, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remember, reminder, I'm sorry, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before the holy prophets and of the commandment of us and the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I need to be reminded by the Word of God. And I'm just going to tell you up front, this is why we come to church, that we worship the Lord. One of the reasons we come is the reading of the Word of God and the study of the Word of God and to apply it to our life and to go out forever changed. Now, I don't always remember very well, uh, especially when it comes to uh, a lot of things. I will kind of share this story with you. There was this uh, city fellow that went out to the farm of his relative's farm to visit with them. And he went out there, and the farmer, while he was out there, the farmer whistled for his dog. He and the dog herded all the cattle into the corral, and then the dog lashed it with his paw. And the, uh, the city guy said, wow, that's some dog. What's her name? 
And the farmer was kind of forgetful for a moment. He said, do you know that uh, red flyer that smells good and has thorns on the stem? And the guy go, a rose? He said, that's it. And the farmer turned to his wife and said, hey, Rose, what's the name of this dog? (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever had that happen to you? Have you ever been somewhere, I was in a place not too long ago, and a, and a man walked up to me, and I saw, and I know, I, I knew the face, but boy, could I, I could not come out with a name at that moment. And he come up to me, hey, Robert, how's it going? And, and you know, we had a grand old time sitting there visiting. Never once did I call his name, because I didn't know it. And then when I left, and I got in the car, and I, I was driving down, Deborah asked who that was, and there it was. So I have to be reminded. I forget a lot of things. And that's exactly what, what uh, Peter's saying here. I want to stir up your mind a little bit. I want to help you remember what's going on. He goes on in verses 3 and 4, knowing this, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Have you heard that today? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Well, let me tell you what, Christians, things have not continued as they were since the beginning of creation. And you know what? People's going to say this. And when people say, where is this Jesus you talk about? They deny the truth of the revelation of God's Word that one day Jesus is coming. We teach that every Sunday morning. You know why I teach that every Sunday morning? I want you to live as though Jesus is coming for you today. And you'll put your house in order, I believe. And so, uh, the, but the, the promise is there. Jesus is coming. In the last days, we're going to have those. When, it, when it exactly did the last days begin? When Jesus was ascended into heaven. In the book of Acts, you can read the story. We ascended into heaven. And all the people stood there looking around. And the angel said to them, Men, why do you gaze into heaven? This same Jesus that, a, that ascended will descend again in the same manner. And so, you know, we, we look for the coming of Christ. It changes our life. It really, really does. It's not taught a lot today. Um, everywhere, some of the people I go around or meet or some of the other uh, Christian folks around town or even uh, preachers or, or teachers, I just don't hear them say, a lot about Jesus coming back again. And you know, it is, um, it is no doubt our hope. It is what God has, is going to do. But scoffers base their idea that things will not change. Well, th- there's a problem there. Let's go to verses 5 and 7. For this they willing, willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are preserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of the ungodly men. Let me tell you what did happen to the earth. It did change. From creation, when we had creation, when God spoke everything into existence, and folks, we could spend a lifetime right there on that particular description, when God spoke it into existence. I mean, that's what God can do. When God speaks, something has to happen. And He did change it. He judged the world because the world was evil. Every man had an evil heart. You know the story, and he flooded the earth, and he only saved Noah and his family because Noah did those things which were right in the eyes of God. And so the world did change. 
And I don't know why they realize, and of course the scoffers, they deny this. They deny all of this. But this is what God's people hangs on to. Now let me read you verses 8 to 10. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some call slackness, but in long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but they all would come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a what in the night? A thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt in with fervent heat, both earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Well, let me go back and tell you that this is going to happen. When Jesus comes, the world will change, my friend. <clears throat> and when it talks about with the Lord, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. I want you to know one thing about God. He is indeed neither the past, but he is the past. Neither the present, but he is the present. Neither the future, but he is the future. He takes it from his name, I am there. With God, a thousand years as if to us a day. It truly is. Have you ever been somewhere and it seemed like time just drugged by? Let me tell you what, what happened to me one time. <clears throat> me and my brother... We're laying in a pawn shop, tied up in an armed robbery. And what was in reality 10 minutes at best, maybe 15 minutes, it seemed like an eternity. And I'm going to tell you what. In our lives today, I know that thousands of years have passed and Jesus hadn't come yet here. But my friend with God's timetable, it's not the same. It's not the same. And one day, one of our days, the day that he put in the motion, sun comes up, well, the earth rotates actually, that's what, not, but the sun comes up, sun goes down, there's day and there's night, that's one day. It's amazing. One day that God's going to open up the clouds. Pull back the curtain of heaven. He's going to descend upon the earth. And boy, you're going to be shouting, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. On the way up, we will meet him in a twinkling of an eye. That, trans that will take place. Do you believe that today? Well, if you believe that today, then there's no room and there's no time for repentance and and turning to Jesus and looking to Him as it is now. You have this moment to do that. Because if I read the Bible correctly, in that moment when we're sucked off of this earth, there's not going to be time for repentance. There's not going to be time for accepting Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. It's going to happen too fast. It's going to be over. So... I'm on some of my favorite passages. My wife would tell you this. This is probably my favorite one of a lot of my favorites. I'll put it that way. <laughs> the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. I got to thinking about that. Oh, I am so glad. Now here goes, church. I am so glad Jesus did not come prior 1977. You know why? I got saved in 1977. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't come 10 years ago. I know a lot of people got saved 10 years ago. Five years, two years, a year ago, even a day ago. So God's compassion is great. Willing that none should perish. So Peter's revealing the heart of God to you. 
that none should perish. When you read Scripture like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, you know, I get hung up on the little word so. He so loved the world. Me and my wife use that terminology sometimes. If you love me, you'll do this. But if you so love me, if you, now come on. If you so love me, God so loved the world. That's what the scriptures say. And he would give his one and only son. Set him to a cross to be the sacrifice, blood sacrifice, that your sins may be forgiven. Oh man, what a day. What a day that was. And what a day it will be when the Lord returns. But he's going to return as a thief in the night. I told you my story when it was thieves broke in the one of my houses at the time. My son happened to be living there. They broke in in broad daylight. They didn't come as a thief in the night. They come as a thief in the day. Right around lunchtime because they knew we'd all be gone because we all like our lunches, right? Backed their car up. Opened the trunk. A friend of mine comes by at that time thinking, Wonder why that car's backed up and their trunk's open. He backed across the yard. Went in the house and stole all of my stuff and left my son's stuff. That's what they did. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. He had his ring laying out, he had other things of value laying out. Did they get those? No. They got everything I loaned him my rifle, my camera. All the stuff I loaned them, they got, they stole from me. <laughs> but they come unannounced. If I'd have known they were coming, if I'd have known, I would have been there to say, no, you're not going to get my stuff. Might give them my son's stuff. <laughs> not my stuff. <laughs> but not mine. Well, when the Bible uses this phrase and uses this idea, this word picture as a thief in the night is unannounced. What you need to get from this this morning is that when Jesus comes, there won't be time to get your house in order. You need to get your house in order now. Because you're living in the last days. So it says, therefore, in verses 11 and 13, therefore, since all these things be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved by being on fire and the elements will melt in a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we are according to His promise look for a new heavens and a new earth in which the righteousness dwells. Now, I need to tell you in that particular passage, I believe that God's talking about, no doubt, the return of Jesus. And then he's talking about a time in the, in the future from there, talking about when the earth will be destroyed and there'll be a new earth. So, here we go. How, what kind of person ought I be in the last days? You said we're living in the last days. What kind of person ought I be? What does Scripture say? Someone in here, this is their favorite verse. I know it because they shared it with me. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and He'll add all these other things to you. Is that what you're seeking today? Is that how you're wanting to live today? All of you in here, may have gotten a phone call before of someone driving down the road, go, oh, hey, this is brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, and we're going to come over and visit with you a moment. And you know what you do? Your wife hangs up the phone. we got to get the house together. <laughs> right? There's not going to be a phone call. 
There's not. God's going to show up. So I'm just, what manner of persons ought we be? We ought to be holy in conduct and godly. That's what we ought to be. I'm not always perfect at that. But you know what? I'm looking for a king that's coming. And when I look to that king that's coming, I want to be pleasing to that king when he comes. So sometimes I get a wake-up call from God's Word, get my house together. What did Peter say? I want to stir up your mind. Well, can we hurry God up? I'm ready now. I'm saved now, so let's hurry Him up. But if I read that passage the way it's read and understand it correctly, someone else over here in my, in my life may not be saved. And it's my responsibility, I feel like, if the God's put them in my circle of influence, to share with them about God so they can be ready when the day comes. So I'm going to give you, according to what Peter says and, and John says, how we can hasten that day. Not necessarily hurry it up, but we can have great expectation of it and we'll be well pleased, even though the timing might not be exactly what we want in life, we'd love to see Jesus come today. If you're in Christ Jesus today, you would say, Lord, come, come quickly. But here's what Peter says, if I hasten today of the Lord coming, then I need to live in holy conduct and godliness. That's the way I need to live. You want to see His coming quickly, and I always do. Lord, help me to be ready there. Also, evangelism. <clears throat> this is what the text is talking about. It says He's not willing that none should perish. You want to see the Lord return? Go out and start winning people to Christ. So how do I win people to Christ? You don't, really. The Holy Spirit draws them. All you do is testify. You testify of the good God. You, you witness of the good God. And then the, left, the rest is left up to God. And when John wrote the book of Revelation, you know I'm praying about going from here the first and second and third John, so forth, so on, through all the way till we get to the book of Revelation, and I'm praying God will be back before then. I don't know how long it'll take. I can stretch it out. You know, with Him, a day is a thousand years. So not long for Him. Could be a little longer for us. Peter goes, but he talks about, John talks about this at the end of the book of Revelation. He says, even so, come Jesus. Do you know, he said that. Have you ever read the book of Revelation? Have you ever read the book of Revelation? Revelation of Jesus Christ. Have you ever read that? All the trouble and all the heartache that's coming upon the earth, the judgment that God's going to pour out for seven years? And the writer of that at the end of it says, Even so, come quickly, Lord. Come. Because he, he was ready. So when I go to, to um, celebrate a Christian passing, I want to tell you what, we got this all wrong. We rejoice when they come into the world and we mourn when they go out of the world. And we got it all wrong because the Bible says we ought to mourn when they come into the world. A little bit of crying because, you know, this whole world has a lot of challenges. And then we all rejoice when they go out of the world. But when I read these verses at every memorial I do, it just stirs up my heart. And this is what it says. Now I see a new heaven. 
and a new earth. I don't know about you guys, but this one here, this earth here, whoo, let me off. I see a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth has what? Passed away. And he goes on to say, Behold, there'll be no more crying, no more sorrow, no more pain. And it says that God Himself, God Himself will wipe away all your tears. What a day that's going to be. So you give that encouragement because you can, because they knew Jesus. It's what, it gets tough when they don't know Jesus. And you do a memorial and they don't know Jesus. I've done one of those. I'm going to tell you what, though. The, if you didn't know it for pastors, sometimes these, these uh, funeral homes will call you and say, hey, we got this person up here. We need a preacher to preach their, their, their memorial. Would you be available? And when I was younger in the ministry, I was gung-ho. I said, sure. Get up there to find out that the person didn't have about five people coming to their memorial service, and none of them knew the Lord. And what am I going to say about this person? So what did I do? I just stuck to the Scriptures. I read them. And I'm going to tell you what, I don't know, the it, it, it's got a great effect in a memorial time, because you know why? Because we're in reality at that moment. Life and death. All of you will die in here. Statistically, 100% of you will. I didn't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> thought, you, thought you might could escape that. Well, the only way we can... The only way we can, church, is to do what? Is to go up when he shows up. And we won't. That's why I'm praying for it. Right between amazing grace and how great they are. Out of here. But it doesn't, sometimes God doesn't work on my schedule. So keep, here's what the next set of verses say. Therefore, beloved... Looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by Him in grace <clears throat> without spot and blameless. And consider the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Oh, wow. The long suffering of our Lord is salvation? It's easy for Christians sometimes to to overlook that a little bit. Boy, our Lord had to suffer so we could have salvation. And you know, I'm going to tell you one thing here on these verses. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're living godly, you're walking with Him, stay the course. Stay the course. Don't let, don't let this or that knock you off that course. Stay in the Word of God and stay the course. I mean, these guys, these, these, these apostles and, and these early disciples of Jesus, they stayed the course. Paul said, forget what's behind you. Press on. Stay the course. And so he goes on, Peter says here in these next few set of verses that Paul, and I'm just going to kind of paraphrase them a little here in 15 and 16, he says Paul had some hard teachings. Paul was a very smart man, no doubt he taught the scriptures well, but he had some hard teachings and they ended up, some people end up twisting the word of God. And we talked about that, we don't have to talk about that no more, do we? You know what happens when you get some some people that don't understand the Word of God and they're ignorant, they want it to say what they want it to say. And so they twist the Scriptures. I heard someone say this, just because someone quotes the Bible 
doesn't mean that they teach biblical truth. I want you to think about that for a minute. Just because they can quote the Bible doesn't mean that they can teach biblical truth. So you have to be careful. That's why, that's why Peter was saying that. Well, in the last days, there's going to be those false prophets, false teachers. There's going to be those that twist the Word of God. Be careful. What person should you ought to be at that point? You ought to be a Berean. You ought to be searching the Scriptures daily. <laughs> uh oh. I hit, a, I hit a sore spot. You know, church just happens on Sunday. Every once in a while on Sunday night. Every once in a while on Wednesday. Did you just say daily? Did, did I hear you say daily? Daily. Is a Christian to live and I feel like sometimes my schedule, I'm living week to week. But as a Christian, to live, well, Sunday's my day to search the Scripture. Sunday's my day to study them. Sunday's my day to live them. Sunday is my day to do that. And then after Sunday, I'm going to do what I want to do. Twenty-four-hour Christian. but not seven days a week. Not 365 days a year. Not until the return of Christ. And we ought to be staying the course. We ought to be persevering. We ought to be studying daily. We ought to be praying daily. We ought to be growing daily. More so as we see that day approaching. And that was a warning that Paul said over in Hebrews 10, 25. We're to meet together and, and, and teach each other the Word of God. And let us study on for ourselves. Pray for ourselves. So here comes the conclusion of this. Oh, I'm going to think I'm going to make it. You, therefore. Who's Peter talking about? You. You, therefore, beloved. Since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. It's going back to that false teaching again, going back to them lies again. But what does it say do? What does, you, what does Peter say do? But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. You know what Spurgeon said about growing in grace? In order that we should know how to stand, he says, and to persevere from falling, he gave us a direction, Spurgeon said. Grow in grace, for the way to st stand is to grow. The way to be steadfast is to go forward. There is no standing except by progression. That's what Spurgeon said. What does that mean? We continue. What does that mean? We persevere. What does that mean? We head toward the goal. What does that mean? We run the race that's set before us until we get to that finish line. So grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Continual growth. You know, someone wrote, grace is not merely the way God draws us to Him in the beginning. It is also the way we grow and stay in our steadfastness. We can never grow apart from grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we can never 
grow out of God's grace. Ooh, that's powerful, isn't it? Spurgeon made one line. He said this. He said, we are in a sea of God's grace. A sea, an ocean that's deep. It has no bottom heart to it. It, it cannot be more and it cannot be less because it's God. And he says when the text says grow in grace, we are in the sea of God's grace. We cannot be in a deeper sea. But let us grow now that we're in it. You realize that? So many people, so many of God's people wade out in ankle deep water. They wade out in knee deep water. But folks, I remember this old song, I'm diving in. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm diving in. So we must grow in God's grace. We must. To Him be the glory. And let me finish this by telling you this. Growing in God's grace, when He said amen there, it expresses the desire of the heart of the Christian to grow in God's grace. The affirmation of our faith is confirmed in that as well. The joy of our heart, the joy of our life, all of that, is there in God's grace. Declaration of faith is there. This is an unknown quote I'm going to share with you. Sometimes we as Christians need to stop a long life road and look back. Although it might have been winding and steep, we can see how God directed us by His faithfulness. Can't we? The deliverance that God wrought into our life, the way He led us, the blessings He bestowed upon us, the victories He has won, the encouragements He had given as we have faced difficulties and sometimes forget God's past faithfulness. We see only detours and dangerous paths. But look back and you will see the victory. Look back and you will see the challenge of the climb, but you'll see the climb and the ascending that God has brought you to. Look back and you'll see a presence of someone in your life that's, that they're with you all the way. He is your companion. He is your king. He is your Lord of lords. The Lord Jesus Christ is with you all the way. Amen. And, he, and I like the promise he said. I will never, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's the God we serve. Who wouldn't want more of him? Who wouldn't? When I was a young Christian, they say, you want more of God? Old Christian, you want more of God? Should be the same. I'm striving. I'm persevering. I want to know more. I want to grow. I want to graduate. I do. And one day, when that call comes... Hey, Robert, I'm just around the corner. Now, it's not going to happen like that. He tells me in his word, he's coming. I want to be ready. How about you? Father, I just pray the day, Lord, your blessings. Lord, so many times as, God, as your people, Lord, I know that you have have put up with us, put up with us, and put up with us. Father, we ask forgiveness. Lord, we want to know you more. Lord, we want to grow in grace. 
we want to persevere all the way to the end. Lord, you're coming back someday. The Word teaches us that. We feel as though we're living in the last days. We know we are. And your return could be any day. It could be today. Lord, would I be ready? Lord, would I be ready? I pray this moment, if there's anyone in this room today that you say, well, Pastor, I'm not sure I'd be ready. I don't know him as Lord and Savior. I mean, you would not be ready. But you can know him today. His patience. He's waited. His, he's waited until this day for you. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus didn't come before I met him. He was patient enough to wait. He's patiently waiting today. Would you come? Would you come and say, you know, I need to receive Jesus. And confess my sins of my life to God. I need to ask Him to come into my life and be my Lord, be my Savior. He'll do that. And maybe as far as the Christians here today, some of us need to grow in grace. Most of us need to grow in grace. What am I saying? We never reach the top, yet we grow. Paul teaches that he had not attained, but he presses on. Is that where you're at today? You need to just press on. You need to grow some more. If your heart's desire today is to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, won't you just ask Him? Won't you ask Him right now? Lord, I need to grow in grace. I need to grow in knowledge. I would ask the, ask the Lord today to give you a great desire for the Word of God. And that when you study it, you, you, you just can't get enough. Lord Jesus, feed them. Lord Jesus, the bread of life, free, feed them. And Lord Jesus, as they consume, they'll want more and more and more. Lord, feed them. Father, I thank you. And not only are you willing that none should perish, but you're also willing that the ones that are in Christ Jesus today would grow in grace and knowledge. What a day it's going to be. Father, I praise you and I thank you for this day. Now, Lord, let us leave here today and be encouraged. Let us go and shout it from the mountaintops that our God is coming back again. Are you ready? Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I praise you. Now, Father, go with your people. I know that you will strengthen them. Let them live for you wherever they go. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. amen. And the church said, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You guys be careful.